Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. If you're new, my name is Marcella. Thank you so much for watching. So for today's video, I decided to do a bit of a book review, book recommendation sort of thing. Um, so since lockdown, I've been reading so much. I feel like for me, it's like a really good form of like escapism. Because even if I'm like watching TV, like it's still tempting to like pick up your phone, your mind can still kind of go off to other things. But if you're reading a book, you have to like fully concentrate on the book. So it's a great way to kind of escape from all the drama of life over the last few months and also I've had more time to read which has been really nice I haven't got an excuse that I haven't had time because I've had a lot of time so I have a selection of books I have read and um, there won't be any spoilers or anything like that I just thought I would kind of share some of the books I've enjoyed what I thought of them the kind of themes in them because if you're just looking up a book like if you just grab a book in a shop sometimes the like buy at the back is really short and it's quite hard to tell so yeah i thought i would share some books i have been enjoying since lockdown so i'm going to start with this book called this is going to hurt by adam k and my best friend emma actually got this for me for my birthday she sent me this and also big little lies in the post which was such an amazing like birthday present because I mean, I've just been reading so much and yeah, it was just perfect. Um, and this, I'm gonna read the back for you. It says, 97 hour weeks, life and death decisions, a constant tsunami of bodily fluids and the hospital parking meter ends more than you. Welcome to the life of a junior doctor. Scribbled in a secret after endless days, sleepless nights and missed, and missed weekends, Adam Kay's diaries provide a no holds a no holds barred, I can't even read right now, um, account of his time on the NHS frontline. Hilarious, horrifying and heartbreaking. This is everything you wanted to know and more than a few things you didn't about life on and off the hospital ward. Sorry for how badly I read that. Um, hopefully I'll improve as I, you know, move on to the other books. Um, but yeah, so this is The Diaries of a Junior Doctor. It is so good. I feel like a lot of people have read this and everyone who's read it, I've heard, has really enjoyed it. Um, so they're just like little diary entries, like anecdotes through his life as he said as junior doctor. I don't really know much about what a junior doctor even is, um, about working in a hospital really. My only knowledge is from Grey's Anatomy, which is obviously set in America, um, and is obviously a pretend show. But the one thing I was surprised at, you know like the ridiculous stories like you see on Grey's Anatomy where someone comes in with like a really bizarre, something really bizarre happened, you think, oh, it's just made up. But, like, these things literally happen. Like, there are some really, like, funny stories in here which literally made me laugh out loud. It's also, like, pulls on your heartstrings. Um, it really opens your eyes to kind of the reality of the NHS. And it especially makes you think it during this time, during, obviously, the whole pandemic. It just kind of puts things in perspective, like how little pay they actually get, how many sacrifices you really have to make, like missing weddings and holidays and yeah, I mean, I already had so much respect, but I have even more respect for people um, who work for the NHS. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely recommend this. So the other book Emma got me was A Big A Little Lies. And now this picture here is actually from the series. Um, who is it? Is it HBO? Yeah, it's an HBO limited series, which is on um, Amazon Prime, if you want to watch it. I tried to start watching it straight after I read the book, but I was struggling to get into it. I think because... I just read it and obviously it is different, it's literally set in a different country and stuff. So I will still watch it because I know it's supposed to be really good. But I think with anything, it's always better to read the book first. So I'll read the blurb. It says, Jane hasn't lived anywhere for longer than six months since her son was born five years ago. So she keeps moving in an attempt to escape her past. Now the idyllic coastal town of Piriwi has pulled her to its shores and Jane feels as if she finally belongs. She finds friends with the feisty Madeline and incredibly beautiful Celeste, two women with seemingly perfect lives and their own secrets. But at the, start of but at the start of term, an incident involving the children of all three women occurs in the playground, causing a rift between them and the other parents. Minor at first, but escalating fast until the whispers and rumours become vicious and spiteful and the truths blur into lies. It was going to end in tears, but no one thought it was going to end in murder. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, the thing I enjoyed about it the most was definitely the writing style. Um, it's just like an enjoyable read. It's a decent read, it's how many pages? 400 and, 500? 482 pages. So it's like a decent read um, in terms, if you're looking for something a bit like longer to get your teeth into. 
Um, it's not too heavy, it's really easy read. Like I said, I really enjoyed the writing style, so I definitely want to read more of Leanne Moriarty, I think that's how you say it. I really want to read more of her books because I really enjoyed her writing style. And it's kind of funny, it's obviously got lots of twists in it as well with the story. And like, I probably wouldn't have picked this myself, but I'm so glad Emma got it for me because I now, like I said, really want to read more of what the author has written. The next book is called Blood Orange. And now a lot of people recommended this book to me actually on Instagram. Um, definitely go and follow me over on my Instagram um, because I am doing like less in depth like mini book reviews. So I'm just kind of posting the book and kind of like a line review with a star rating. So if you want to see that kind of as I add more books to it, because I'm literally reading all the time, definitely go and follow me. This is called Blood Orange by Harriet Tice. And there's a really short bit on the back, it just says, Alison has it all, a loving family, a career on the rise, but she's been given her first murder case to defend, but all is never as it seems. So it doesn't really tell you that much kind of from reading the back of the book. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of the themes, there's a lot to do with like affairs, gaslighting. So I have mixed feelings about this book. So I'm glad I read it, but I don't know if I'd read it again, if that makes sense. I know a lot of people really, really, really enjoyed this book. Um, it's kind of quite hard to feel empathy with like the characters, but I think that's kind of the point as well, because they're not necessarily like the nicest characters. Some good twists in it, but I kind of guessed a couple of them early on and I was kind of just waiting to see how they panned out. Yeah, I am glad I read it, but I'm just not sure I'd read it again, but lots of people really love this. If you do like a kind of like darker, juicy story about like affairs and relationships and um, obviously a bit of murder, then yeah, I think it is worth a read. But like I said, I have kind of mixed feelings on this book. Next is another book which loads of people said they absolutely loved and I am one of them too and it is The Silent Patient by Alex. I have no idea how to say that surname. Michael, I, I don't know. I'm really sorry to this author. I do not know how to say your surname. Um, and I'm not going to butcher it by attempting to say it. Um, but yeah, this is called Silent Patient and the blurb is literally like three little short lines again. Alicia Berenson lived a seemingly perfect life until one day six years ago when she shot her husband in the head five times. Since then she hasn't spoken a single word. It's time to find out why. I don't want to say too much about this book because I thought the twist was brilliant. I was literally like in shock. Um, so yeah, I kind of don't really want to say anything about it. Um, but if you do like kind of quite a dark book with like some good twists in it, I definitely would recommend this. Well, it's not too long. It's like 340 something pages. Um, and I like that it's not too long because I feel like this easily could have been dragged out for longer and it kind of doesn't. And um, so I literally read this in like a couple of days, but I loved it. So yeah. 10 out of 10 from me. Another book, again, a lot of people recommended to me um, is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. And this is apparently supposed to be a major film soon. So I really wanted to read it before the film came out because like I said, it's always better to read the book first. So I'm gonna read the blurb for you. What did she see? It's been 10 months since Anna Fox left her home. 10 months during which she haunted the ruins of her old New York house, lost in her memories, too terrified to step outside. Anna's lifeline to the real world is her window, where she sits watching her neighbours. When the Russells move in, Anna is instantly drawn to them. A picture-perfect family, they are an echo of the life that was once hers. But one evening, a scream rips across the silence and Anna witnesses something horrifying. Now she must uncover the truth about what really happened. But if she does, will anyone believe her? And can she even trust herself? So as you can see, it's a thriller. I like thrillers, as you're probably kind of going to gather from my selection of books I read. It's like, they're my favourite types of book to read, are thrillers. Um, and yeah, I know lots of people love this book. Again, I have mixed feelings on this book. I did enjoy it and I'm definitely glad I read it. There are some really good twists in it. Um, it's very like dark. The only thing was it took me a long time to get into the book. It is quite a meaty book. It's it's like 400 and, about 450 pages. So yeah, it's quite meaty. Um, but it took me a long time to get into it. And I like read books really fast, but I kind of wasn't reaching for this um, initially because it was just, quite slow um but when you do get into it about mm, a half to two thirds of the way through it is good it is a slow burner and at the beginning of the class kind of a bit confused to what was even going on 
but I think the payoff at the end does make it worth the read um, and if you're looking kind of for like a good thriller you've got the time I don't know now obviously travel restrictions are being lifted maybe you're going on holiday and you want something you know nice which you can like read and just kind of get lost in this is like a nice decent read or even if you know you're not going on holiday you just got more time to sit in your garden it is a decent length um but yeah good twist a little bit of a slow start but I would still say worth a read Okay, my final two books are also both thrillers, so just warning you now. And um, This is called The Couple Next Door, so I'll just read the back for you. You never know what's happening on the other side of the wall. Your neighbour told you she didn't want your six-month daughter at the dinner party. Nothing personal, she just couldn't stand her crying. Your husband said it would be fine. After all, you only live next door. You'll have the baby monitor and you'll take it in turns to go back every half hour. Your daughter was sleeping when you checked on her last night. But now, as you race up the stairs in your deathly quiet house, your worst fears are realised she's gone you never had to call the police before but now they're in your home and who knows what they'll find there what would you be capable of if you were pushed past your limit this is a thriller as it says by the back where a baby goes missing after a dinner party and i enjoyed this i don't think it's like the best thriller i've ever read but it's definitely like an enjoyable read i kind of predicted some of the twists i think that's what kind of separates me enjoying a book to me literally being like oh my god i love it 10 out of 10 recommend like i said with like the silent patient like i didn't actually see that i was really like in shock by like twists because when it's a thriller you know twists are coming so you kind of like anticipate them i always try to guess them i think i'm like sherlock holmes or something i don't know i kind of love that kind of trying to guess but i i want to be surprised still i liked that it kind of again i think it did i read this one quite a long time ago so i'm trying to remember yeah it kind of a bit in the same way as pretty little lies kind of shows the story from like different people's accounts which i like enjoy kind of almost seeing the story being like pieced together and um, yeah I think it's a, a decent thriller worth a read and finally is my favorite book I've read since lockdown and um, I give this 10 out of 10 five stars and it is called The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell so the blurb says be careful who you let in in a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea a baby is awake in her cot well fed and cared for she's happily waiting for someone to pick her up in the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scrawled note. They've been dead for several days. Who's been looking after the baby and where did she go? And where did they go, sorry. Um, so it kind of sounds like a similar sort of theme, but they are completely different books. They are not similar in the slightest. Uh, this one is a lot longer. It's 449 pages. But I honestly probably could have read this in a day if I had... Well, I probably did have enough time, but I thought, you know, I'll try and stretch it out because I wanted to like enjoy it and not rush it. But it is such a good book. So it does that thing which I said I really like where it kind of the story unfolds from different people's perspective in different chapters and some of it's written in the first person some of it's written in the third person which I personally find like really interesting to read it's like quite like dynamic it's also set it's also um has like a not a linear timeline so you're reading it from the past and the present and the future um which it's kind of like keeps you on your toes keeps you like engaged um loads of twists in this um yeah i really 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 enjoyed it like you definitely need to concentrate with this one like i said because initially you're like wait a minute what's going on who's this character what's this time um but i kind of like that because i feel like it made me like properly focus on the book completely draws me into the story and if you're looking for a really good page turning gripping thriller i definitely recommend this so the next book i'm actually going to read i haven't started it yet it's actually balanced my camera's um my trap is balancing on it and um, because it was a bit low down so i can't show it to you but it is half world away by my gail and um, which is completely different style of book it's not a thriller i mean not all of these were thrillers but i mean quite a few of them were and so i'm looking forward to reading that and i'll be doing a mini review and um, over on my instagram but i hope you guys did enjoy this video let me know down in the comments your book recommendations because um as you see i've got through a fair few so i could definitely do with some new ones um like i said i love thrillers but i'm open to like all styles of books because otherwise I might, you know, just become a bit creeped out from reading all these dark thrillers, to be honest with you. Let me know if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them, because it is just so interesting. Like, everyone has a different thought on books, films, 
etc um but yeah i hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did and um, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you're not already and um, yeah let me know if you want to see more things like this in the future i don't know i thought i'd just try out today because why not i feel like i've done a lot of food videos and as much as i love them and i know they're really popular there are only so many supermarket hauls on what i ate in a day as i could film so i thought i'd do something a bit different and um, i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day whatever you're doing and i'll see you in my next video bye